I, I think it has a lot to do with, again, a difference between the UK and, and America. Uh, I, I would say in the UK, um, we're a skeptical, skeptical, cynical bunch. Would you agree? I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in America, there's idealism, there's optimism, there's energy. Anything can be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, Americans also have a great predilection for celebrity. They love celebrity. I think it, it's all the genesis of that must have been Hollywood and Hollywood stars and all the rest of it. But it, it's permeated other parts of American life. And it's certainly permeated uh, how they see music directors. And this goes back to Stokowski, to Reiner, to Toscanini, all of whom were fated in a movie star like way. These were heroes, people put on pedestals and given powers. Uh, which very often were inappropriate. And uh, I think that's why uh, we have a union contract for musicians in America, which is a, is a direct reaction to some of the misuses that uh, happened with the very powerful pharaoh-like music directors of, of years past. Um, but I, I, I think um, the, the, the downside in, in all of this, um, maybe the upside you, you would say, okay, you get in real personalities, you get in terrific leadership, you get people in with vision, uh, and that's absolutely true. But you, the downside for me would be that you can enable people not to think of their community and of their audience, but to think of their own uh, personal ambitions for an organization uh, which may be diametrically opposed to the institutional priorities that an orchestra should be setting itself for the future. Okay, so do you feel that some of the work that you've done with Oregon, with Minnesota, or, or anywhere else for that matter, has been building some of those bridges with the community, has been creating some more connections, some more engagement, and that's a, a place where you started the work? Yeah, I think so. I think it goes back a, a long time in, in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, I, w I was thinking the other day, of, uh, education has always been a major, major theme for me. It's something I have uh, tremendous passion for. For. Um, and it goes back to, um, I would say, the late, no, probably the, the sometime in the early 80s. I think I gave Peter Weigold, who will be a name that you know very well, his first education job. Uh, and I was trying out people and uh, seeing who would fit and who had new ideas and who could reach out into the community to look at at how music can communicate, the power of music, the relevance of music. Um, so it's always been a theme with me and with uh, Liverpool and with Bournemouth, we uh, promoted very large scale education programs, community outreach programs that really took musicians and the orchestra and the, uh, our animateurs out there uh, in, in a very real sense. In, in America, I think some of those ideas are still new. And that's one of the things, actually, I wanted to ask you about. You used the word animateur. Yep. And certainly, coming from the London Symphony mm -hmm. Orchestra background that I have, of course, the animateur, the role of uh, education in the community mm -hmm. and outreach was a, a major part of the RSO's yes. work. Yes. Um, and I know that the Philadelphia Orchestra have an animateur, but I'm not sure whether that's something that's really taken off here. Maybe that would be worth exploring what that really means and what the benefits are. Yeah, well, just to give some definition of animateur. Mm. Thank you for picking me up on that one, because <laughs> I, I know that it's it's an unfamiliar term oh. here. Animateur uh, was a, a term that uh, was adopted in the UK probably in the 1970s and 80s. It comes from the dance world. And the dance world decided that they wouldn't just give performances, but they wanted to interact with their communities. And in order to do that, they felt that they needed to have the strong creative and artistic involvement of very special people who can perform, who can communicate, who can interact, who can get people involved with interactive activity, not just demonstrating, but actually bringing people into, into a performance, even if they have no experience of performing uh, at all. And they adopted this, this word 
animateur, which I suppose the literal translation would be uh, somebody who animates, and that's exactly what these people can do. Uh, they are very, very special people. I've had the great privilege of working with several in, in the UK. Uh, highly strung, temperamental, creative, astonishing people who can go into a special needs school or go and work with um, a, a local city council and produce a project which can help teenagers at risk, can help uh, street children, um, can go into uh, hospices or hospitals and do some astonishing work but in the sense of an interaction, not a demonstration, not something that's passive, but actually something that uh, can bring people into the joy and into the magic of actually performing. I'll give you one funny example of that. Uh, and it was when I was uh, running the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra on the south coast and we had to give a presentation to one of our local authorities, one of our funding local authorities. So we managed to get on the agenda and these local councillors came in and you could see that you know, they weren't very happy to be there, it was a waste of time. They were expecting a long uh, uh, speech from me. Uh, but instead, uh, as they came in, I had our animateur, who was a bass player, and I had one of our percussionists, and as they came in, the animateur was on his bass doing a little walking rhythm, as they sort of came in like this. And then the percussionist was uh, standing by a marimba, just playing one or two notes. And they didn't stop at all. They all sat down and they wondered what this was. And then we had this huge box of, of percussion instruments and we had identified uh, some of the uh, the the major um, recalcitrant uh, local authority people who uh, we really needed to bring in so uh, I gave a little introduction over this music boom, boom, boom. good evening and uh, this is what we're going to do with you uh, this evening we're going to really allow you the experience of performing. N none of them read music, none of them performed. And uh, our percussionist threw to one of our most hostile uh, local authority members, threw to him um, um, a percussion instrument. And he picked it up like this. And there was this rhythm going. And he just indicated the rhythm that this guy needed to play. So he, and of course he was surrounded by his peers. So he was under pressure to do well, otherwise he would be embarrassed. So he started giving this rhythm, which was being indicated by the animator. And then another percussion instrument was thrown out, and a different rhythm was given. And then suddenly, after about five or ten minutes, the room was full of percussion instruments, like a gamelan orchestra, playing and performing with the bass, improvising uh, with the, all the percussion instruments playing their different rhythms, and very, very exciting rhythms as well. And, and the, the, the marimba accompanying all of this with chords and that was their direct experience of the power of music and the power that the orchestra could give them. And that's the most powerful thing that you can do is have people realise that they can be musical, whereas Absolutely. they would never think that they could be. Yes. They wouldn't understand it, they wouldn't feel it, they wouldn't yes. connect with it. Yes. And then just in that short space of time, you would probably completely transform.